Before we get started, fair warning folks, this is going to be a pretty sloppy video because a lot of this footage I did not originally intend to make a video out of. I just sort of decided to cobble it together at the end of the day, so consider yourself warned. Hello viewers, it is night, and the reason it is night is because the earth is rotating. The reason it's night is because I've spent all day working on this. Now you may call this madness, you may call it genius, you may call it a boxcar with some wires sticking out of it, which is probably the most accurate of those three descriptions. I call it the sound box. And in order to explain what it is, we need to go back to a time long, long ago, earlier today. Now I know that was a perfect setup for a montage, but I forgot to film a montage, so I'm just gonna tell you what's going on. This is a Bachmann Sound Value HO Scale 460 steam locomotive. And this normally comes with a fairly cheapo, but not too bad, sound decoder in it. The reason for this project is that I like this engine a lot, but the sound did get old sometimes, and I wanted to be able to run this as a normal silent DC locomotive, because I don't have a DCC system on my layout. However, I didn't want the sound decoder to go to waste, so I thought, what if I hooked it up under the layout as a separate unit so that no matter what engine was running, the sound decoder would think it was in that engine and make sounds that were synchronized with that engine. There were some roadblocks along the way that I didn't anticipate, but let's go ahead and see how that went. I have taken the wires that would normally run to this tiny little speaker inside this engine and run them to a big speaker. It is now, instead of being hooked directly up to a speaker, hooked up through a potentiometer for volume control, which is not working for some reason. But anyway, it's hooked up to a stereo amplifier, which is hooked up to this ginormous speaker. And I was surprised, but the bass response is actually pretty good, even with the sounds coming out of the little decoder. The reason I did this is there was an issue with the first version where the big speaker was drawing so much power that it was dropping the voltage and the decoder wouldn't actually power up until the voltage was high enough that the wheels were already spinning. So it wouldn't really sit in idle like this. But now, since it's running through this, it's not really drawing any power from the decoder. All right, version three. I now have the circuit board completely separated from the Bachmann tender with separate wires soldered onto it. Blue wires go to the motor, or in this case, this engine, which I have propped up so it won't run away. Uh, the orange wires go to the track and the green wires go to the audio cable, which is still connected to the stereo, which is connected to this speaker. So if I now turn on the power, it seems to have to get up to about this point before the train actually starts moving. It's not quite perfectly synced because this is a different locomotive, but my ultimate goal for this is to have this connected into the layout wiring rather than the engine so that I can run any of my steam engines and the sound will come from a big speaker under the layout. Obviously this isn't going to be ideal because they don't all run at exactly the same speed, but they're all Bachmann, so they're all reasonably close. So this is working pretty well. Um, I think the next step is to mount this in a tidy little box. So all the circuitry is now inside the state of Maine box car. Power is hooked up to the Tech 4, track is hooked up to the track, and the sound is once again hooked up to these speakers. Um, I'm going to try this engine to demonstrate a typical thing. It actually syncs up almost perfectly with this and presumably with the one that it came out of, which I haven't rewired the tender yet, so I won't be able to run that for a little bit. Oh, I know what's happening. All right, I've realized the Tech 4 is actually kind of a bad choice for this because it has pulse width modulation at low speeds, which briefly cuts the power and keeps making the decoder restart, so we'll have to use a different transformer when we actually wire this up for real. But for now... A lot of these Bachmann engines do run at pretty close to the same speed, so the synchronization works pretty well. The one thing I am discovering is that this gets a little bit noisy when you're running at more than a crawl, so I don't know how often I'm actually going to end up using it, but it is kind of neat that it works. The other interesting thing is that as you turn it down, that's about where it started moving, but it's still going at a pretty good clip, so I now need to keep turning it down. The train doesn't stop 
until it gets to about there, at which point, of course, the pulse width modulation is kicking in and cutting the power. So, again, we should try that with a different transformer. It needs to get down to about this point to stop, but it needs to get up to about that point to start moving again. All right, so it's a bit later. The system is working, but I'm not quite satisfied with it. You see, if we turn the power up to about 30%, then the system boots up, it's sort of idling. Um, we then turn it up to about 50%, and only now does the train start moving. So we can turn it up from there, but if we now turn it back down to 50%, the point where it was stopped before, it's still moving. We have to get it down to about 20, before it stops. I mean, I could live with this, but the problem is that this is not the way it was when the decoder was in this engine. The issue is that the speaker isn't hooked up, and there's now no power draw at all on the speaker leads because they're just going to the stereo. Now, this decoder didn't used to be able to boot up until we were at like 40%. When I had the other speaker attached to it, the big one, the problem with that was that it wouldn't boot up until we got well above 50%, and then by then the train was already moving, so it couldn't idle at all, because that speaker was drawing a lot more power. But now that there's no power at all, it boots up early, and for some reason it won't stop until you get back down to 20. I think what we need to do is connect the original speaker in parallel with the output leads, and that should make it think that it's still in the engine, and it should put everything right. So, let's try that. Okay, the speaker is now wired in parallel with the output cord. Let's see what happens. That clicking is it repeatedly trying to start. That happened when it was in the engine too. If we get it up to about 40%, it is now on. You can tell the sound is coming out of both here and here. Oh, it's hooked up to the engine backwards, but no matter. Okay, we're about there. If we now bring it back down to where it was, behold, the train stops. Problem solved. All right, so we have a new problem. It's all hooked up. It all seems to be working fine. If I reduce it too quickly, with this engine, the whole thing shuts down and reboots. With the other engine, um, the train simply wouldn't stop. It would just keep rolling really slowly. All right, so I decided to do one final experiment just on the off chance that the Tech 4 transformer was making things behave oddly because it has AccuTech technology which modulates the voltage at low speed, blah, blah, blah. So I hooked it up to a cheap Bachman train set transformer and we're gonna see what happens. I've used a piece of tape to mark exactly where the base level is. That's the lowest voltage it should go. So I'm gonna start the train. I'm now going to return this to exactly the spot where the tape is. And the train stops. Interesting. Try it again. And back to the tape. Anyway, for what it is, I think I'm pretty happy with that. It's certainly more fun to play around with this way than it was in the engine. And as a bonus, now I can run this engine silently. It's just like as if it were factory now. And I managed not to completely wreck the sound decoder board. It does actually still work. And if you wanted to, you could hook this up to a DCC system and run it as a DCC train. And that brings us back to right now. There were a few complications along the way that I didn't mention in that, such as having to swap the tender boards between this and another of my engines. Anyway, I now have this engine, which I can run silently on DC power along with all of my others, and it's lovely. And I now have a sound box that I can play around with and probably never actually use. So, with that said, I will see you next time. I know I haven't posted a whole lot of videos lately. Despite being in quarantine, you'd think I would have literally nothing to do except make videos, but I somehow managed to keep myself busy, and I'm not really making RC videos. I'm not going anywhere. I can't, like, go out and drive RCs in parks because there might be people there. Ooh, people! Oh. I've been working on train stuff. I know I haven't made a lot of videos. I'll try to make more, but I may or I may not. Anyway, folks, I will see you next time.